from Super League to Olympic distance to age group world records to Kona. Go longer with the right fuel at the right time with S Fuels. Pacho Man, welcome everybody, 11th year, yeah, standing ovation for Pacho Man, I love it, 11th year, breakfast with Bob from beautiful Huggles on the Rocks, my name is Bob Babbitt, we're brought to you by Master Spas as fuels go longer, Hoka Let's Fly, Form Smart Swim Goggles, Quintana Roo, Zoot, the original triathlon brand, and our Challenge Athletes Foundation, our next guest, only one of our favorite people on the planet, three-time Ironman Australia champion, Laura Siddle. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Bob. Thank How you. How are you doing, Laura? I'm good. I'm actually quite impressed. We're actually back to breakfast with Bob because in uh, St. George it was brunch. Yes, And it then was. in uh, Edmonton we had beers with Bob because it was we in the did. evening. So, yeah, evening, we're now back yes. to breakfast. Yeah. I, I love it. <laughs> I've been following your training from Kansas. You guys had a tough training camp. We did, but it's, um, you know, it, it is tough. But when you have a great crew and a JD crew uh, with Julie Dibbons and... A uh, bunch. I'm going to say Katie as well because she does a lot of work behind it with the, with the crew. But so when you're with a good gang and you've got good training buddies and you're all in it together, um, yeah, it just makes it so much better. It makes it e not say so easier but happier. There's so a few laughs. Having two Ironman World Championships same year and Ironman Saint George about as different from this race as you can imagine. Seven thousand feet of climbing, brutal all day long, and you go, uh, you end up getting seventh there. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Did you surprise yourself? Uh, yes, always. Um, like I knew that St. George was probably a better course for me uh, for that full distance. So, and I, w I was in really good shape going into that race. I'd had a great lead up. Um, again with Dibs, she'd got me into a really good position, a really good place. Um, so I was kind of confident but nervous at the same time because you still got to put it out on the day. Right. So yeah, I was super stoked with that result. Yeah, really happy with that seventh place. And when you yeah. win, it's one thing to win a race once, <laughs> but to come back and defend when the target is on your back and then to do it again. Yeah. When you look at your career, are those three wins right at the top of the list? Oh, gosh. Um, I think, yes, they are. Right. Short answer. Um, I, I think I'm, I never take a win for granted. And I think my very first win in Australia was special. Yes. Um, obviously, the second year I had, I was able, I had the privilege of wearing the number one bib, which is very rare for women. So that was an incredibly proud moment. And then to be able to defend and win again wearing that number one bib. The third time was probably the one of the races I'll remember. I'd had a really rough lead into the race, and so to come over and I was, you know, um, up against Caroline Stefan, who was the local, the local favourite, and we all know what an incredible athlete she was when she was racing yeah. and still is, and had some magical moments in that race. And, and so winning that race was, was incredibly special. Um, I will add in Ironman New Zealand as well, having spent a lot of time in, uh, in New go. Zealand. And that race is just, it's incredibly special, the culture, the people. It's, yeah, so winning, winning that in 2018 uh, will also, yeah, it's up there as well. I mean, uh, you never take a win for granted. They're all special in different ways. People know you as a triathlete, but they, I don't think a lot of people realize that you're an engineer, British Army officer, a uh, degree in mechanical engineering. When you have that type of backdrop, why go in the triathlon? Well, I mean, you were in the UK, and then you were, were you based in Australia, and that's where you sort of fell in love with the sport? Yeah, I, yeah so I, I went through university and or and did a gap year in the army and when went to university then did engineering um i'd always played sport it was always a huge hobby and a passion but for me growing up in the uk at that time it was never considered a career it was always what looked nice on your cv right. and gave you rounded skills when you went to a for a job <laughs> interview um so yeah i started working for shell as an engineer and then got the opportunity with shell to move to australia for a, a two-year assignment and, and when I went, everyone said, oh, you'll never come back in two years' time if you're going to Australia. You're likely to stay there. And, yeah, seven years later, I was still there. <laughs> um, but it was when I was in Australia that I found triathlon. And then 
just started it as still as a hobby. Right. You know, I still had that c- corporate career and um, that was kind of still what I thought I, the conveyor belt and the path of life that you had to do. Sure. Um, but just got, yeah, grew through the amateur ranks and it just was taking up more and more of my headspace. And I think being in Australia, it's there's a very different um, approach to sport and a lot of people were saying you should turn professional and I had to get my head around what that meant. But yeah, then it was sort of, I got to a point and I got to a crossroads of, I'm not getting any younger. I'm already pretty old for a professional athlete. Most are retiring, and I was 34, about to turn professional. Um, so it was kind of a, a, yeah, I didn't want to look back in 10, 20 years' time and think, what if, and I'd never given it a chance. Right. Well, and especially when, when COVID hits, yeah. you must look back on that. That was like the best decision I ever made, because even if we can't race ever again, 2013 to 2019, you were racing as a professional and doing great stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mean I'm really lucky. I've you know, you you often forget how how lucky we are that I, you know I, I got to ch- I chose this I get to yes. choose it and um, I've got to follow my passion and yeah you miss the corporate salary I won't lie about that I was going <laughs> to say because that's a <laughs> and, that, and that security but you know would I have dreamt as a kid as a little girl that I would be a professional athlete sitting here with you in Kona for what the fourth year of racing and um, yeah you know it's just what dreams are made of so when you have to tell the family <laughs> that. Hey, guess what? I know uh, we spent a lot of money getting a degree and all the rest of that stuff, but I'm just going to chuck that for now and go be a professional athlete. I'm sure that went over really well. Uh, I remember my dad saying, and this was actually when I left Shell, and (laughs) I I did go to another company to work, but I was leaving Shell, and he was like, and he'd come from a, you know, he's in his 70s, and he'd been in a career, and my granddad was in a career where they stayed in the same company for their whole life. Forever. Um, and he said, you know, they have a really good pension scheme at Shell. And why are you leaving this corporate world? Because they've got a really good pension scheme. That was his sort of way of thinking, I think, saying, implying what the F are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, they are super supportive now. Um, I wish I got to see them more. I don't. They're all in the UK. But I think they're, they're still, they give me enough shit and take the piss out of me enough <laughs> in what I'm doing and, and how I'm traveling. But I think and I hope they're all pretty proud and, and just happy that I'm happy. So it's funny, the other day, uh, Lauren Parker, who is a good friend of both of ours, sent me some photos uh, of, of from way back. And one of them was her, and for our, for our audience, Lauren Parker was a, a top age group triathlete here in 2015. She took second in 25 to 29, 20, in the, again, the 25, 29-year-old age division, Australian, and went pro in 2016, and in 2017, uh, she was getting ready to, to race you yeah. at Ironman Australia. And she crashed on April 18th of 2017, paralyzed from the waist down. And when, you know, she was supposed to be racing you. And the, one of the photos Lauren sent me was you at the hospital. Yeah. You'd never met Lauren. No. But you went to the hospital after she was paralyzed to be with her. After you had won the race. Yeah. Why? Oh, I still get goosebumps every time you tell that story. Um, why? Yeah, I, I don't know. I just had this compelling feeling that I needed to go and see her and meet her um it was my first time in Australia I knew that Lauren was racing I didn't know her before the race I knew that she was an up-and-coming age group athlete yep. she had a, she was a great swimmer I knew she was going to be one, one to watch in the race um I heard about her accident obviously before the race as we all did and it just sent shockwaves through the community out down in like around the world but in Australia Absolutely. um uh we went to the race and I was fortunate that's where I got my first Iron Man win, and so incredibly special. But it just, yeah, it just felt like there was something missing. Um, I think I mentioned it at the awards afterwards that that she should have been here, and yeah, just felt the need to go and see her and meet her in in hospital, which is quite daunting. Yeah, when you don't know someone and then you're going to meet them for the first time, and they've just been through such a traumatic, life changing experience. But yeah, went and saw her, and it was probably one of the best best things I've done. Um, and then, yeah, been kind of friends ever since. Well, and then, so after Lauren was paralyzed, we had her on the radio show. And she said during the radio interview, I want to stay in the sport. I want to yeah. stay in triathlon. I told her, if that's the case, you need to come to San Diego in October, just you know, a few months after the accident, uh, because our San Diego Triathlon Challenge, we'll have 150 challenge athletes there. We'll have David Bailey, wheelchair athlete, who, a motocross athlete who was paralyzed and won the Ironman. Kyle's Maleda, Navy SEAL, who was uh, paralyzed and ended up winning the Ironman. And that would really be important for her moving forward. And she came. We, she checked herself out of rehab. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> said she was going home for the weekend, and we flew her to San Diego. And Lauren flew in to be with her. Yeah. That, so now it wasn't just seeing her at the hospital. You got to spend some quality time and really bond. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that's just an incredible. Like, I would re- definitely recommend if anyone hasn't been to the San Diego Challenge in uh, for CAF, best day and try. It is just a weekend that you have to go. It should be on the bucket list. Just, uh, I remember like just arriving there with Lauren, and we went to the the dinner with Thursday all the kids. Night with all the the kids. Thursday night kids, and there's just hundreds, thousands of kids <laughs> with all sorts of disabilities and abilities. I will say, just running around the place, smiles, laughter, like so much fun, not a care in the world. And it was just incredible to see. And then the whole events over the weekend. And um, I think we, we went swimming. I think we got, got Lauren in the water that year. Um, we, yeah. we, we got her at the pool. And we got her at the with, pool, that's uh, right, yeah. With our swim coach, Alan Voisard. Yeah. And so after that, within <laughs> nine months of the injury, she takes a bronze medal at the Commonwealth Games. Yeah. The following year wins the world championship. Yeah. And the uh, following year, uh, they actually just took a silver medal at the Paral- Paralympics yep. in her first Paralympics in 2020 in Tokyo. Which I was there, out there. Because you were guiding. I you were, you <laughs> were a, you were I was a, a reserve guide reserve for guide. British para try. Um, so, yeah, we were stuck in the hotel, unfortunately. I couldn't get out on the race course to see her. But I could, we could see the race course from the hotel room and I could watch it on TV. But I wanted to go out there and support the para para athletes the visually impaired for british triathlon but part of that motivation had been so i could be there to for lauren Lauren. yeah so you guys have become close friends through all this yeah and then she didn't tell me she was coming here to kona (laughs) the last conversation i had with her was like yeah i'm not coming anymore and then i saw her on lee and on the queen k riding (laughs) the other day and i was like you didn't tell me what the heck (laughs) so being part of that journey what has that meant to you because you've seen her at her lowest lows in the hospital you saw her when she, I think the light bulb went on when she was in San Diego. Yeah. You know, all it took was a hand cycle and a racing chair, and the next thing you know. Yeah, I mean, what she has achieved in the last couple of years has been truly incredible. Um, turning her life around, or uh, changing her life from, from what she knew. Yes. Um, to then adapting it, and to how she's changed as an athlete as well, and into racing in the, in the chair. Right. Um, it's been in- incredible and seeing like those accolades of winning those gold medals and the silver at the Paralympics, which I know crushed her. I know it did for that split second. It was so close. I don't know if anyone's seen the race. She was literally passed on the finish line. Less than a second. She, less than a second. She was in gold and, and Kendall passed her. Which, and, and Kendall's great. I've met Kendall as well. So both incredible athletes. Um, I also get to see the Lauren that nobody, like not nobody, but a lot of people don't see that not the front that she puts on like you get to know how much pain she's in constantly 24 7 the struggle she goes through every day that a lot of people don't see and that's really hard but she's just one of the toughest there there is and you know she she raced st george in in may and if you know the st george race imagine yeah. doing that in a racing chair in a hand cycle yeah. arms all day with seven thousand feet of climbing yeah. and the run course was brutal she yeah, was and amazing so n- yeah and so i have every confidence she's gonna be absolutely brilliant out here she is so the this course is not necessarily the best for you you do better whales uh you know tough yeah, courses tough you ones. like the tougher yeah, yeah. the better yeah. and i'm not saying this isn't tough <laughs> this is one of the worst this is a brutal course but tough but yeah. in a different way tough it's in a just different hot way. it's yeah. not climbing yeah. You, you like that. Yeah. You like where well, there's a change yeah. in elevation. And, and tough conditions. So I was talking this morning with, uh, I'm staying with Lauren Brandon, who's a training partner and good friend. And we we're just like, we're like trying to, what are our best conditions for us to have our best races? And for me, it's actually as much as I hate, everyone's going to kill me for saying this, the windier, the better on the bike. And the, like, the longer the bike, the tougher the bike is probably better for me. Yes. Even Brutal. though I know in my head as well that it's going to hurt. Yeah, but if it if it's hurting everybody, you can handle it probably hopefully. better. Hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> right. And then the other race that y- you've had a lot of success at is, is Challenge Roth. This yeah. year, you were fourth at Challenge Roth. Talk a little bit about what makes that race so special. Oh yeah, just another incredible race with incredible atmosphere. The 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 event team I've come to know for years and are good friends, and you know the whole the whole um, area of Roth or wrote I should say um, right. just is so welcoming the, the locals they, they all want to come up and talk to you you can be in a, mi- a village 
on the bike course in the middle of nowhere and on race day they're all set out on the tables with a beer at you know 8 a.m in the morning <laughs> in ger very german style with their pretzels and but they're they're just so friendly they love the sport and the whole week's a big festival it's very welcoming it's there's just a good vibe and a good buzz and the race course itself i i love and that finish line it, it, it has to be one of the best in the world no, as well no, just no yeah question. so with uh uh with the, what are the goals here this weekend <laughs> Um, it's Next been, week. to be fair, since St. George, the seventh in St. George, it's been a bit of a roller coaster. But, you know, that that is sport. That is why partly why we do it. Um, so I've not had the best run in that I would like. But again, I would say that Julie is amazing and has got me in what we feel is the best shape we can in the last. And it seems touch wood to have been clicked in the last last few weeks. So that's really good. And I'm feeling feeling confident and happy about that. For race day, it, it always is, and I know it's as clear, it's just executing the best race I can do. Yes. So I've got my goals, I've got my plan. Yes, it's going to have to be flexible to see what the other girls are doing. I think it's, gonna, it's really exciting that the women are on their own day. So yes. we should get a clean race at the front, uh, not with any other interaction, and just get the recognition for all the women racing that we get our own day and we get the, the coverage that we deserve. Um, I think that might change the dynamics. Obviously, there's also like more women racing than there ever, ever. has been before, uh, in not the just pro. in the professional yeah. field, but but yeah. overall. So that's going to change things. Um, I just want to be able to execute on the day and show the training that I've put in and the shape I'm in and cross that finish line. Just feeling proud that I've put everything out there. And the fact that you're racing on Thursday means that you can come to think out I'm not racing on Friday. Well, this is I've had a lot of people ask me to <laughs> check when the party is. They're like, can you ask Bob when the party is? Is, there, gonna be a, is there a double one or is it kind of we do Wednesday, Friday? And no, I'm like, no, I only one. If it's Friday, only that's one. even better. Of we course. can we can all the pro well, women can come on the Friday. Exactly. Who cares about the guys? We it don't care matter. about <laughs> these guys at all. Exactly. Yes. We can party and then roll over there about four in the morning, get a spot on the pier, I'm just take a nap, and watch those guys race. Just rolling straight through. Exactly. <laughs> Laura Siddle has been our guest. Everybody, how about a round of applause for Laura Pacho Man? It's a Friday. Get those coffees ready. Because it's breakfast with Bob.